The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and you have markets in the red to kick things off right now. You're looking at an S&P negative by about 20 points. We were in the positive at about 3 a.m. You were pretty close to almost flat at one point earlier in the market. Markets fading a bit right now, right near the lows that we had at about 6 a.m. S&P's negative about half a percent. But man, you look at this chart on the S&P's yesterday's low, 230 East Eastern time you get a low of 42 42 folks and then you trade up a hundred and what is that 25 points 125 points in the S&P to see what we're talking about on a Fibonacci basis pullback wise Look at that, folks, right at the 382 in terms of that plunge at 6 a.m. this morning. You trade down to about 4320. That's where the 382 is of that entire run up we had last night. Uh, we're about 10 points above that level right now in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100. How about more than a thousand points from Tuesday's low to the high last night? Remarkable acceleration in the NASDAQ 100 man Tuesday low with a 12,000 handle. Wednesday high, a 14,000 handle. Now you take a look at the NASDAQ 100, you trade from 13,400, you trade up about 600 points in the NASDAQ. And on the NASDAQ, when we're talking about what kind of retracement we have going on this morning, not quite back to that 382 just yet. Dow off 138 points. Dow up 1,500 points from where you were Tuesday. The Dow yesterday lows of about 33,274. You trade up about 800 points on the session to close it out in positive territory. And the Russell negative by nine right now. Bitcoin above 41,000. Remarkable how you're seeing a lot of uh, Bitcoin trading right with the market. You see the acceleration with the market. Really remarkable uh, that Bitcoin trades up about $2,000 as the market accelerated higher yesterday. How about crude? Back over $100. The run is not over in crude, it looks like, just yet, folks. $100.79, that's a 15-minute basis. You put things on a daily chart, and you see the pop that we got going on right now to 183. Remarkable. You talk about the highs of February 14th, 95.82. Yeah, we did get slightly below that level, but interesting. That's where you catch a bounce. We'll see how high the bounce goes. Right now, we're back above 100 bucks on crude. Gold contract, catching a bid. Gold catching a bid as well. We make it below 1900. Check out the 15 minute on gold. Quite the acceleration indeed. We'll put that on the 15 minute for the contract yesterday. Uh, early so what time? That is, yeah, that's Fed. Uh, 2.30, you got an 1,800 handle on gold down to 18.95. You finished the day at 19.30. So a lot of the $32 in the gold contract taking place after 2.30 last night. Uh, gold at 19.41 right now, and we jump to notes and bonds. The low yesterday, 123.25, you pop a bit from there. All the talk about uh, every meeting live, you're gonna get six to seven hikes is the deal, Bob, dot plot showing seven, I believe. Uh, Chairman Powell, very confident that the economy is strong enough to handle hikes at basically every meeting for the rest of the year. That's where the market maybe is not so, so sure. Uh, no way they end up with seven, Jeff. Yeah, the market uh, probably, probably agreeing with you a bit, but man, there is so much so many variables up in the air right now to play out over the course of the year. When you think about how things changed so dramatically last year, very, very difficult to forecast as an analyst anything going on. The Fed will be data dependent. Uh, that is the chairman's opinion right now. But we'll see how things go if they really do ratchet it up with a meeting, a meeting, a meeting, a hike, a hike, a hike. And uh, we'll see if the companies can keep up as the cost of capital increases in a big way. Um, yeah, and we'll find out. But yesterday was the beginning of it. That was the liftoff. We get a quarter point and we get every meeting being live. And guess what? We get every meeting being, as of now, expected for a hike. 
Remarkable, to say the least. All right, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks and see how we kick things off, man. You talk about an acceleration yesterday. How about Amazon charging up $120 off of the lows of $29.50? We're at $3,072. You jump to Apple shares, Apple at $158.51. Some of the stocks that have gotten absolutely punished recently really caught a bid yesterday, and not even talking about the China stocks. DraftKings. I think DraftKings was up 13% yesterday after being up uh, the prior day Tuesday session. DraftKings is up 20% from where it was trading at the lows of Tuesday alone. Uh, Zoom caught quite a bit as well. Zoom trades from uh, 94 handle on Tuesday to 105 this morning on Zoom. Uh, Peloton caught quite the bid on Tuesday as well. 2050 up to 23 almost for Peloton shares. Uh, they were talking about ARC, right? ARC quite the acceleration from 51 bucks to 59. But man, you put this thing on a daily. No, you got to put it on a weekly to get the full run. You're talking about highs made more than a year ago. Yes, that is quite a pop. We just traded from 50 to 60 basically in two days in arc. Can you even find the bump, the bounce on that chart? Can you? No, you cannot find the bounce on that chart. Percentages on small numbers can be very deceiving, folks. Uh, arc is traded from 160 down to 50. You just caught a bounce to 60. We're not even on the highs of last week, okay? Because the demise has been so fast and furious. Uh, a week ago, is basically where you're, at, where you're at. You buy ARC last Thursday, you ride it down to 51, you ride it back up to 60 with the volatility in this market. Pretty remarkable to say the least. Let's jump over to Tesla shares. Uh, 831.55, 7.55 was the low on Tesla. We'll take a look at Tesla on a weekly basis. Almost gives it all back to August 16th, the run. You bounce at the 7.86, the plunge low on the week of February 21st, you make it down to 700 on the dot for Tesla shares, that gave back all of the gains that you had in 2021, back to December of 2020 prices. We're bumping up in Tesla against this area that we had a high portion uh, February, early, basically January through February of 2020, an area of about 850 Tesla trading at 831 so far this morning. All right, let's jump around to some of the headlines I got this morning. And here we go. Bond traders stunned by a hawkish Fed are sounding the growth alarm. The 10-year yield falls below the five-year rate for the first time since 2020 as debt traders brace for fresh losses as the U.S. hikes rates. Uh, the gap between the five and the 10-year yields inverted for the first time since March of 2020, while the difference between the two and 10-year yields continued to narrow. Uh, a lot of talk today saying, you know, as long as you don't see maybe an inversion between the 2 and the 10, they may be okay. We have an inversion between the 5 and the 10. So not uh, not out of the realm. And yeah, there's a lot of themes to the articles about the Fed out there. And that's the basic theme in terms of the growth alarm. Uh, the market is pricing in a higher recession risk. And you can see that with the inversion between the 5 and the 10, um, you can see that with the inversion of the 5 and the 10, that's one fixed income, RBC Global Asset Management. Uh, That's the head of U.S. fixed income at Global RBC Global ha Asset Management. They are sending a strong commitment to fighting inflation. And uh, I was listening to some of the press conference out there. I mean, Chairman Powell talking about price stability. They will get price stability back under control and will not let it lead to a recession in the U.S. Strong words. Uh, but that was all backed up by the fact that the economy can handle the rate hikes coming and we're going to find out whether it can because they're coming until uh it can either handle it or it can't and we'll find out but the s p is negative by 19 to kick things off quite the acceleration yesterday we'll be right back talking to our man kevin hinks from td ameritrade fast market folks we'll be right back Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now, negative by 19 points. NASDAQ 100 futures negative by 83. You got the Dow off 143. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, on the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market with your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. They break down the day's market action, walk you through uh, hypothetical trade setups, talking options, folks, talking defined risk. Kevin Hinks, what would you think about that acceleration yesterday? Good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. You know, you Yesterday was a pretty big event for for this overall market as you know Jerome Powell introduced his first rate hike since I believe 2018 was the last time and Tommy it just showed yesterday's lesson was uncertainty turning less uncertain or more certain because Jerome Powell raised interest rates raised the overnight fed funds rate he spoke pretty hawkishly about interest rates going forward, yet the market was able to rally because of two things, I think. Less uncertainty overall, which you know the markets always like more than uncertainty, and his ability to paint the U.S. economy in its strong light and, and make the case that he's able to raise the Fed funds rate because of the strength of the U.S. economy, Tommy. And I thought that was Jerome Powell's, you know, great moment for him yesterday that he could he could give us that news, not all of it good in terms of interest rates, yet stocks rallied off that news, Tommy. Yes, yeah, some of the words he had, man, could not be stronger, in my opinion, in terms of saying, listen, we're coming with it, man. Uh, price stability, we got to get it in control. And I'm surmising, of course, you know, uh, but the general gist, as you're saying, Kevin, pretty hawkish, um, saying the economy can handle it. Every meeting is live. The dot plot is what it is, and it's out there now. And, um, and yeah, we have to get price stability back under control right now while keeping, of course, uh, full employment on the horizon. S&P's, Kevin, sitting 200 points, almost to the point, from the lows of Tuesday when the Fed began their meeting. Now, that was a pre-market low, but pretty remarkable in terms of market trades into that meeting. Lower the last two days. We're up 200 points coming into a liftoff um, that is just going to continue for the foreseeable future. We got 10-year yields, Kevin, at about 2.15% right now. Uh, some geopolitical talk, of course, in this market uh, persisting. 
What are you guys going to be looking at coming up on the program at 12 today, Kevin? Well, today we're going to go back to focusing on stocks with earnings. We still have, we have two good ones today, FedEx and GameStop. GameStop had some interesting news yesterday, suddenly getting into the, the gold business and, and metals. We'll, we'll discuss all of that. And then in the A block today, the first segment, we'll look at Google Alphabet. So Google Alphabet, FedEx with earnings, and GameStop for earnings, Tommy. Yeah, uh, Highcroft Mining, right? $27 yeah. million. Is that That was AMC. Did, did GameStop come out as well, Kevin? Oh, you know what? I apologize. You're right. That was not. No, that's, that's I got lost in the meme stocks myself. I did. But yeah. that one, listen, Fast Market's going to have to take a look at the AMC one, Kevin, because I already saw yeah. some tweets. I don't even know about the unusual option activity prior to that announcement. Um, and I'll let people go do some searching for that one. But yeah, GameStop, the original uh, meme Reddit stock of right. all. Um, and I'm sorry, what did you say was your A block, Kevin? Uh, Google Alphabet. Google Alphabet, of course. Uh, quite the acceleration for Google, quite the, the fang stock indeed. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the time you take every day to talk to us, man. We appreciate Fast Market, and it's quite a fast market indeed lately, man. We'll be watching at 12 noon today, and you have a great weekend as well, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. Folks, tune into the program. They do an outstanding job, walk you through hypothetical trade setups and options at a time when we got some nice companies with earnings out there. We got FedEx coming out with their numbers. Quite the pop from FedEx. A week ago at 199, you're trading at 26, 226. Uh, you take a look at FedEx. I'm going to pull a couple of these Fibonacci's I have off there. The full COVID run almost, okay, from where we were at 103 in May of 2020 up to 319. We're sitting right at that 50% to the pullback at 210 to 225 for FedEx. You take a look at Google shares. Google, quite the uptrend indeed. You take a look at the pullback we have in Google right now. I mean, a lot of stocks, folks, pulling back pretty dramatic. Uh, Google, not quite to that 382, but sitting right at the 236 right now. And as Kevin said, we get, said, we get GameStop with their earnings uh, after the bell, I believe today. Let's jump over. Yes, it is. After the bell today, and there's some volatility premium for you. I love the Thinkorswim platform, folks, the way they uh, very clearly tell you how much volatility is priced into, whether it's an earnings event, whether it's priced into the weekly options. Uh, for this earnings event, $13 priced into that equity, only an $86 equity. But as you'd expect, GameStop, yeah, you're going to get some volatility premium. You look for the entire week, so 13 bucks gets you basically through today. So tomorrow's volatility premium about a buck fifty, because the whole week you're talking fourteen dollars and fifty seven cents right now. Implied volatility. That's as of the close last night. Uh, great information on the Thinkorswim platform, folks. Thinkorswim TD Ameritrade. They are a sponsor. I know I'm biased. I would use the Thinkorswim platform anyway, especially for options uh, and the amount of data and the ease that they provide their users over there. Yeah, and uh, AMC. I'll see if I can find some of the statistics because I saw some action last. Uh, last night, and let me see if I can find the number. Let me see, I'll try and pull it up at the break because let's just say that there was um, a dramatic surge of options activity prior to the AMC announcement that they are getting into gold mining to the tune of a $27 million, I think, purchase, giving them 22% of Highcroft mining, which is almost set to be delisted, uh, and you have a huge surge. My guess is they're not getting into the mining business. There's something else going on there in terms of the meme stocks. Maybe they're going to start printing literal gold coins that they'll take NFT pictures of. I don't know, something like that, I think, versus just saying, hey, guess what? We're going to use some of our um, meme stock capital to invest in a gold mining company, and we think we bring the expertise that the market can't bring. Folks, if, if, if Highcroft Mining had such an available opportunity for a company to come in, provide funding, and take a stake, you'd probably see a, a well-run mining company come into that picture, not AMC. And then you add the options activity on top of it. I'll see if I can find it at the break. Um, but yeah, it just doesn't stop, man, in those meme stocks. I, I can't wait to see how they spin that one. Very odd to put it lightly, Jeff, exactly. Uh, markets, holding right kind of where we were. You're negative 18 points, folks, but I imagine it's gonna be an eventful day right now when you look at the action yesterday. You got, folks, 100 points down, 
and 130 points up in the S&Ps, almost, on ballparking. Okay, NASDAQ 100, even more dramatic. The pops you had right now, you get the market basically sitting where you were at 6 a.m., uh, and we'll see where we go from there in terms of the open coming up in four minutes. We jump over to FedEx shares, as I said, catching quite a bit. Now, FedEx, they're out with their numbers. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, after the bell today as well. Uh, so similar move priced in, right, as GameStop, $13 and change. Uh, but GameStop, an $86 equity. FedEx, a $225 equity. Both of them, about a $13 and change move priced in. I believe GameStop was close to about 13 bucks. FedEx pricing in about a $13.87 move. Uh, it's moved $18 from Monday's low alone. Quite the pop for FedEx, but it's been quite a pullback for this equity. As I said, almost pulls back right to the $200 price point. The 618 would have been 186, but that $200, I get that as a high back from April of 19. Stay tuned folks, we'll be right back to the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back Back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&Ps right now, negative by 17 points. We got the NASDAQ 100, negative by 73. We open basically where we came into the market pre-market, and we got a caller on the line. We got my dad. Good morning. What's happening, Dad? Tommy O'Brien, what's going on? Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I was going to get there, man. How's vacation going this week? 
It's well, I'm back. I'm, I'm heading to the office right now, man. Oh, it's a beautiful perfect. Thing. I didn't realize. Perfect, you, man. Yeah, you know what I want to talk about? This Highcroft deal, right? Oh, boy, so, yeah. When, well, when you had mentioned, there's no doubt, the option, If you, when you look at that shot, right? I was looking at that shot, and I, I'm not really familiar with Highcroft, uh, but what, what happened, three days before that was announced, Highcroft went up like 200%, because I think it was like yeah. 24 cents and was 84 or something like this. Do you know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep, I got the Bloomberg uh, article up here to talk about. The shares rise 361% in about a week in volume way above average. This probably won't end well, it was the quote from somebody uh, for Highcroft and AMC. And yeah, it was basically a penny stock, it looks like, from November until, you know, a few days before that. And then you just had huge, huge uh, shares coming in, um, even right. if it was stock. And yeah, go ahead. I yeah. And I think what you have, okay, is that, you know, this guy from AMC, I mean, he made a fortune for AMC, you know, doing secondary and third offerings at 45 and $50, okay? So this is, he's strictly, my take is that they're strictly doing this to run the stock. That he knows this meme stock goes and they're going to take a shot at it and say, okay, man, let's see if we can run this thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be interesting looking at it, number one, because my, my take on it is once these Reddit traders catch on to the gold stocks anyway, that is a lot easier to run because all of them are such low price stocks. Do you know what I'm saying? Sure. I remember so, you talking about that we'll see, early we'll on. We'll see where it goes, but that's that's what it seems like it's shaking out. And that, for AMC in particular, okay, because again, I, the amount of money that AMC took in I just, it was almost, it's almost like 300 million, you know. I mean, it's some outrageous amount sure. that people bought into. And, you know, the company has the money. That's the bottom line. So, you know, they got a different business plan now. It's like, okay, just find find a cheap stock and run it. And, of course, you can't do that legally. But the bottom line is that all they have to do is buy it and have a couple people on, not a couple people, but a lot of people on Reddit starting to run it. You know what I mean? So it's going to be wild, I, man. Yeah, and I was just Googling as you were saying that because I remember them so big. And one article from June of last year was talking about that they raised $587 million in that raising alone, uh, which was 11.5 million uh -huh. shares at $50.85 for AMC. Uh, AMC, folks, right now. Fifteen dollars. So they push out eleven point five yeah. million shares at fifty bucks, and that was in addition to the six hundred and fifty-eight million they had already raised, bringing the total one point two four billion dollars. Yeah. Okay. There you go. That's you a go. better business plan than selling movie tickets and popcorn, man. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's, it's crazy, but it's, you know it's there, right? You can see it's there. You know, so it's going to be. Well, interesting it'll be interesting to see how though. they explain away a full week ahead of time um, prior to that deal that this stock started going crazy um the amc ceo was scheduled to be on jim kramer i believe that night and had to cancel okay. and blamed his lawyers because he was there was too much action going on um i imagine they started realizing that they were probably going to get some questions they couldn't answer there so we'll see if that hurts the plan yeah. though man because anytime it's that glaring it usually comes down as you know but but it's pretty glaring well, man, from you know, anybody and when we're yeah. talking about this, if we go back to, you know, when um, Microsoft's taking over Activision? Yes. Um, what you have there, we're going to hear more about that because Barry Dilla and his son-in-law, they bought a line, they bought off-market, um, you know, uh, options from one of the big banks, and it's hundreds of millions of dollars that they made on that deal. So that is going to basically come down also, meaning, sure. you know, they, they they made a fortune, man. Um, and it's like, okay. And what, what had happened is that Diller was on, at one point was on Activision's board, and the son-in-law was on another board. So, But the bottom line is that if you follow that trail, it's like, okay, man, this is, and I, I suspect that one's really going to get opened up because that's eye-popping, what they, what they did, you know what I mean? So, man, 
I'm telling yeah. you, it, it, what blows my mind, Tom, is that the amount of money that people actually have, and then they do it again, and they risk going I, to jail. It's like I unbelievable. Agree. Greed is, is crazy, man, <laughs> and hopefully people learn from watching these people. And that's, yeah, I, I, same thing. I was just Googling because I remember that one came up. This is like a March article on CNBC. Um, David Geffen Diller, Geffen and Diller's yeah. stepson, um, together made large bets in January, just days before the video game maker agreed. And you're talking about $60 million of unrealized profits in an options trade. There you go. Um, yep. Unreal, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And like you said, it's just crazy, right. man. How, uh, but people just think they're not going to get caught, man, which is a bummer when no, the no. craziest thing, right? It's like and you so say. And market wise, you know, what well, we had yesterday, it's kind of intriguing, man. Market wise, you know, like the way I look at markets, you know, we had come down to that low, you tested that low, and you did have light volume, not yesterday, the day before, and the day before. Yes. And you took off with volume yesterday. So this is going to be intriguing to see uh, how this thing shakes out because we had real volume out there yesterday. There's no doubt about that. Do you know what I mean? It's pretty intriguing that the... In the market. Yes. Um, what do you think about the, the, the Fed in general, like more fundamental, how Chairman Powell, I'm not sure, I'm sure you read if you weren't even listening in terms of pretty, pretty hawkish, um, you know, every meeting's live. They got seven hikes coming. The economy can handle it. Um, and I guess the economy can handle it part, as Kevin Hanks was talking about when I was chatting with him. But pretty strong words. I found myself saying, man, I wonder what the market's going to react to this phrase he just said as I was listening to the press conference. And he said, listen, we got to get price stability back under control. That's the deal. And I'm surmising. Yeah, and then no, the market I, takes off 120 I, S&P points. My, my take is the Fed is going to keep going up like a quarter percent. But that's not going to handle it. They're going to have to go up like a half a percent in another seven or eight months to, to slam this down. And, you know, Powell doesn't think we'll get hit a recession. I think we will, because I don't think you can do all of this. And you know, there's just too many things happening at the same time. And the prices are going to be so high. Like we're going to be we'll stabilize at a much higher prices. So then it's like, OK, so where are those profits if it's much higher prices for the input versus the output? So we'll see. Sure. I mean, you know, the, the yeah, best I mean, case scenario is what really Powell laid out, that we can keep going up in interest rates and it won't be a recession. You know, I mean, a recession is not the end of the world. I, you know, I'm sure people worry about the 2007, 2008. I don't see, it's not even close. Sure. But, you know, a recession just means that you're not growing or you go a negative half a percent, quarter percent or something. And that's pretty easy yeah. to do, really. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, I mean, prices we'll are definitely, out, you know. Prices are definitely up. 8%, they're not going down because they're up 8% over a year. It'll be really interesting to see what happens when we get into the at least second half of this year, as he was talking about. I think they, you know, they see it waning a bit like the second half of this year and then really dropping off next year, mostly because I think you're going to be dealing with some crazy comps um, once you exactly. get into exactly. part of that, you know, exactly. to, to, to be compounding on an 8% prior year growth, right? That's going to be like 17% over two years. All right, man. It great is. to hear from it you. Is. We'll be um, we'll be we'll one. be okay. interested in the program at three o'clock today, man. I love you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Love you, man. Bye bye. Okay. okay. Are you right. in the market right for back. buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it could seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's negative by 14 right now. Nasdaq 100 negative by 63. I got a chart of AMC up here. Uh, so especially remarkable when you look at these offering prices. So again, I was just googling some of um, the offerings that took place. So this is from June 3rd, 2021. Back to the chart for a moment. And again, they got $50, folks. Okay. They got, let's get the exact price, $50.85 for the average price of selling 11.55 million shares. 50 bucks. Man, yes, it was over that period for four weeks, but look at this chart, okay? That is great execution in terms of picking a high, man. Um, this wasn't like GameStop, okay? When you go back, they traded to 483, okay? AMC, they got the high of 50 bucks, and they didn't get it just once. Uh, as you look at this article, this is talking about that they sold 11.55 million shares at 5085, but that is in addition, as I said, to the 658 that they already raised that quarter. So $1.246 billion. Now, just looking at the one that we have the price for, 5085, okay, you take 11.55 million shares and you just take the $35 difference in terms of the offering they got. Okay, now they sold those shares to somebody, folks. Okay, they offered those shares, they sold them into the public. They sold 11.55 million shares at $50.85. The stock is trading about $35 lower. That's $404 million approximately. We'll call it 400 million bucks that they just took from investors, folks. Okay, be careful in this equity. Now, it's Awesome that my dad called in, all right, because here is what he's talking about here. Highcroft Mining plans stock offering to capitalize on AMC's investment. The stock price is up nearly 500% since March 4th amid retail buying. AMC announced it's going to purchase a 22% stake. Already, they were like, guess what? As soon as Tuesday, now this article was out on Tuesday, so I don't know if they're trying to do it already, and maybe uh, all of the talk of insider trading cramped their plans. But that seems like the exact plan he was talking about, right? They invest, they push out an offering after the shares spike, they pull back, and they have a bunch of capital that was pretty much unwarranted taken out of investor uh, capital. Remarkable, man. And yeah, I'm seeing even more articles as I'm talking about there. Look at this. So they, they, they were really clamoring to take some money out when times were tough. I didn't realize some of the prices they got. Yeah, no wonder they seized $50 in a heartbeat because they sold 43 million shares at an average price of nine bucks in May. Just getting a bounce from a buck 91 
to where they were around 10 bucks in May. They pushed out 43 million shares at 10 bucks a share, let's call it. That constituted 428 million of new equity capital in May. And then you had them, of course, follow suit when we were up to about 50 bucks, uh, raising almost another half billion dollars and just like that you're back to 15 bucks and 31 cents and i don't know if that's the end of that one especially if it comes out um insider trading allegations and so forth going to be interesting to see how that one follows up uh as well all right let's see what else i had pulled up here to chat about um yeah, we got China in there. How about the LME again? It's almost becoming just a joke. I thought this was um, referencing, I had to make sure what time, what what day of mayhem at the LME this was talking about. Nickel traders awake to fresh mayhem as LME glitches again. It's like, is that the article from yesterday? No, this is the article from today because it happened again on Thursday. Orders to sell at 8% limit down, rejected before the open. Uh, reopened the nickel market Wednesday after a week-long halt, but that had problems and glitches. The start of the second day of trading after a week-long suspension was delayed after a series of problems hit the LME's electronic system. First, brokers found out that orders to sell at the lower limit of 8% below Wednesday's closing place were being rejected after the LME expanded the trading band the pre day. Then three trades did appear to go through at that price, but four minutes before the market had been due to open. What is going on? <laughs> Finally, the LME informed brokers that trading wouldn't restart until 845 and canceled the three earlier trades. When the market finally opened, uh, they dropped daily limit of 8% to 41,945, but only two trades had taken place by 10 a.m. When you can't count on an exchange, folks, don't trade it. It's that simple because you're playing in an environment that you don't know the rules of what exists. I mean, you had the LME canceling trades uh, earlier in the week, shutting down for a week. Those aren't risks that I like to open myself up to. Talk about undefined risks when you can't trade for a week. And look at this market, folks. S&P is catching a bid. We catch a pop up to 43.44. Highs yesterday, 43.67. So still well off those highs. All the market's catching a bid. You got the NASDAQ 100, negative just by 48 points. That's about a third of a percent right now. Let's jump around to some of those FANG stocks, see how we're opening. Amazon opens in the green by about one-tenth percent right now. We jump over to Microsoft shares. Whoops. Down about six tenths percent with the market right now. You jump over to Google. They're going to be talking about Google Alphabet coming up on Fast Market with our man Kevin Hinks at 12 noon Eastern time. Uh, Google barely in the red by about two tenths. I talked about ARC a little bit. ARC up about two tenths percent as well. You know, you're going to live and die by the tech stocks in ARC, man. Zoom down 1.3 percent. You know, another one I was looking at. Yeah, DraftKings. Huge acceleration yesterday. You give back some of it today. You know, in the long run, folks, you take a look at this company. OK, you're getting into a company that's valued at seven point three billion dollars. And I don't know of any industry that's going to expand like gambling over the next couple of years, at least in the U.S. Uh, maybe cannabis is one of them. But that area is just such a max pain situation that I'm not touching uh, canopy or any of those stocks, even though I believe in the health of that market in the long term. But, man, they got a long way to go as opposed to the gambling companies where, yes, you know, they got a long way to go to legalization everywhere. They'll be spending some money to ramp up the, you know, their customer base as each state opens it up. But boy, you got a big future in gambling, folks, in America. We're at the very cusp of every major sporting league adopting gambling. It's happening. It's already happening. Um, and then you throw on top of it, okay, that college athletes can now be paid which is great, I think. Um, but that's going to completely change the college landscape, folks, like nobody's ever imagined. I'm not sure if you've been following, but the way this works in college football now is that basically boosters can pay athletes any sum of money they want for their name and likeness, okay? And as a result of that, they require them to attend a school. 
So you'll see, for instance, let's say good old Boston College, all right? And I got my, my I got a bunch of great friends that went to Boston College, being from Boston, and uh, they're all joking that their football team might have to join a different conference than the ACC because they are not going to be competing with the amount of money that some of the uh, competitors in that conference are already potentially paying some of the recruits. There was a story out there, and I'll try and find it if I can for the last segment, that one of a 2023 recruit, already got like an $8 million contract if he plays through his sophomore or junior year, uh, if he attends a school in question. It's going to become a big business, folks, and it's going to lead right into gambling on NFL games when money becomes everywhere in that sport. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the other equities that have been punished in a big way. We'll take a look at Roku when we come back as well. Stay tuned, folks. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now, negative by eight points. NASDAQ 100, negative by 41. You get the Russell rising to positive territory by two points right now. Uh, so jumping back to that story real quick, and this is the one, and, and the whole landscape, folks, as I said, it has changed forever. Uh, so the story comes out, I believe this was, uh, okay, so within the last week, a 2023, folks, five-star recruit signs a name, image, and likeness collective that could net more than $8 million. So this person, now the athlete and the school not named, okay, the athletic, which reported this, uh, 
got a look at the contract, I guess, uh, but made the deal that they would not reveal the school or the athlete. The amount is contingent on the athlete making public appearances and taking part in social media promotions and other, you're going to see this a lot, NIL, folks, that is name, image, and likeness, okay? That's what the athletes get to sell and get paid for. Activities on behalf of the collective or a third party. So you have boosters forming collectives and third parties, okay? They're going to pay these athletes for their appearances and promotion as athletes contingent on attending the school. Now this athlete's gonna get 350 grand immediately and a monthly payment that will increase to more than $2 million per year once he steps foot on campus. But that number, that, that dollar amount begins immediately. The contract stipulates the athlete could be paid 1.5 million over two years and that the collective could seek repayment of the money. Uh, they're gonna receive a 10% commission uh, and expenses if the deal is terminated. It's, it's a wild, wild west out there, folks, in, in college football and the NFL. The fact that money is going to be so prevalent in college, it's going to become a very, very big deal uh, in the NFL, the way money and gambling starts to fly as well. All right, jumping over to Moderna. Saw an article out there, Bob. Moderna CEO has sold something like 400 plus million shares since the pandemic began. Uh, the only thing I want to point out here, we got 20 seconds as we wrap up, folks. Merck had a position in Moderna. I'll never forget it. They sold that position in the first half of the fourth quarter of 2020, folks, okay? If you think that Merck wasn't equipped to make a valuation on their shares of ownership. They sold when it was at about 100 bucks, all right? Runs up to 500, just like that. We're back to 166. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's up next. We got live programming all day. My dad is back live at 3 o'clock as well. Have a great Thursday, everybody.